Welcome to today's lesson. I am Siamasaka Kiriam Dens. Um, so I'm going to take you through um, actually a revision in chemistry uh, where we're going to solve actually examination questions. So we go to the lesson right away. Well, uh, we are going to look at um, uh, solved division questions. We are going to solve them clearly. And uh, as I've indicated here, um, if ever there are some people who want to know, mm -hmm. for examinations, you can actually contact me using the WhatsApp number two plus two six zero nine seven seven four one nine nine four nine. That's my WhatsApp number. And uh, so uh, basically we we'll look at um, the periodic table and this periodic table we'll use it actually to answer questions. So the First part of the question is as follows. Element T and X are respectively, are represented by the symbols uh, T and uh, there is a number there on top, 24 and down 12. And X, uh, 14 on top and down seven respectively. What do the numbers 12, and seven stand for. So in these um, elements, T and X, what do the numbers 12 and seven stand for? Actually, these numbers for A, actually they stand for the atomic number. So the atomic number is also the same as the number of protons in an element number of protons. It's the same really. So that is the representation of 12 and seven. What do the numbers 24 and 14 stand for? They stand for actually a B is the mass number. It's the mass number, or it can also be known as the nucleon. number, so the nuclear number, the same as the mass number of the element. So we have really uh, solved part A and B. So we're going to let's see, give the period of the element T and X. So for you to be able to give the period, of the element T and X. The easiest is actually uh, to write the electron configuration. So the electron configuration of T, uh, which has actually 
the atomic number, which is 12. So the electronic configuration for this one actually will be uh, in the first shell, there'll be two electrons. And in the second shell, actually there'll be eight electrons. And the third shell, there'll be two electrons. Therefore, T is in period, period three. So what it means is that the number of shells actually gives the period in which that element is. For X with the actually the atomic number, which is actually seven. So this one, the electron configuration would be two, five. So in the first shell, we are going to have two electrons and the second shell, there will be actually uh, five electrons, making them seven. And therefore, X is in period actually two. And so from the period of time here, we are aware that these are the periods. So this one is uh, helium and hydrogen are in period one. And then this would be in period two. And this would be in period uh, actually three, depending on the number of shells. Okay. So we have done this one. Give the group of element T and X. So the group actually look at the number of uh, valence uh, electrons, having the number of electrons in the outermost shell. So you notice that here we said actually T the electron configuration was two because it has 12, eight, and two. Therefore, uh, the number of electrons in the outermost shell is two. Therefore, T is in group two. We normally use the Roman numerals. And for X with the electron configuration of um, actually, because the atomic number here is seven, which we said it is actually two electrons in the first shell and five in the second shell. And therefore, X is in group five. So uh, in other words, the group number is the number of electrons in the outermost shell. So the element will be placed in a group based on the number of electrons in the outermost shell. While for the period is the number of shells that the element has, which places it in that period on the periodic table. So which element T or X is a non-metal? Number E. You remember we said that T has actually 12 electrons which gives the electronic configuration to be two, eight in the second shell and two. So nine metals actually for them to be stable, they gain electrons. 
So for this one, T is a metal because it actually loses electrons. T is a metal because it loses electrons. To, to be stable. So it will lose these two electrons. It is easier for it to lose two electrons than to gain six more to make them eight. While X we said it has seven electrons or we said the atomic number is actually seven and therefore its electron configuration is two five so what this means is that it is easier for it to gain three to make them eight here than to lose the five therefore x is a nine metal because it gains. So it will gain three more, it gains electrons. To be stable. So for it to be stable, it is easier for it actually to gain three electrons so that the outermost shell can have actually eight electrons. What common name is given to group one and group seven? Oh, actually we have omitted it. Number F, identify element T and X and give the electron configuration of the T and X. Actually, we have already given the electron configuration. So T with the actually 12 uh, as the atomic number, this is actually, if you go to the periodic table, you will notice that actually this is the magnesium. This is a magnesium. So T, T is magnesium. While X with the, the atomic number five, actually is nitrogen. If you check on the periodic table, you will notice that actually the element with the, the atomic number seven is nitrogen. And so we go now. The electron configuration, we have already written it several times. So what common name is given to group seven and group one? So number G, actually group one elements are also known as alkali metals are alkali metals. While group seven elements are halogens. 
they are known as halogens. They write a balanced chemical reaction of potassium, chemical reaction of potassium with water. When potassium actually acts with water, uh, which is actually H. So potassium, which is a solid reacting with the water, which is a liquid, you are going to form potassium hydroxide, which is aqueous plus hydrogen will be given out as a gas. So really, when an alkali metal reacts with water, you form a hydroxide and hydrogen is produced. So balancing this one, uh, actually you notice that uh, uh, you need to have two atoms of potassium. Therefore here you put two, meaning that uh, you have two atoms of potassium this side and two potas atoms of potassium on the other side. And for hydrogen, you have four atoms here and this side you have two plus four and oxygen you have actually two on both sides. So this is the balanced chemical equation. How do the reaction of lithium with the water compare with the reaction of potassium with the water and give a reason for the differences in the reactions? Uh, actually, lithium, also react with water, which is a liquid, this is a solid, to form lithium hydroxide, which is aqueous plus hydrogen gas. And uh, we can balance this equation the way we did the other one. But this reaction would be slow. Then compared to the one for potassium, when it reacts with the water, which is a liquid, you form potassium hydroxide which is aqueous plus actually hydrogen gas. So balancing this equation actually gives us that. But this reaction would be actually faster. So the reason is that actually when you write the electron configuration for lithium with atomic number three, you are going to get two electrons in the first shell and one electron in the second shell. One for potassium, the atomic number is 19. Atomic number is actually 19. So potassium, the atomic number is 19, meaning that the electron configuration will be 2, 8, 8, 1. So you notice that here the electron which is lost in lithium is nearer than 
nucleus, which is uh, and uh, which is actually containing the protons which are positive. Therefore, the electron in lithium is far, is attracted more, is actually attracted more to the nucleus. So the uh, velocity electron in lithium is attracted more to to the nucleus. Uh, which he has actually positive protons. Then in that of actually potassium, which is further away because it has actually um, four shells, so it is easier to lose the electron, uh, which is very far from the nucleus than the one which is nearer to the nucleus. And therefore, the reaction for potassium would be actually faster than the reaction for lithium with water. What is the state of chlorine and iodine at room temperature? Actually, chlorine uh, actually chlorine uh, is a, chlorine is a gas. It's a gas at room temperature. while actually iodine is a, a solid. At room temperature. So at room temperature, actually chlorine and fluorine are gases, while bromine is actually a liquid at room temperature. Then iodine is actually a solid. That's how actually the halogens of group seven elements are. Write the chemical reactions of the following, if they are possible to take place, potassium, chloride reacting with the bromine. So they are saying potassium chloride reacting with the bromine. What do you get? Actually, this reaction will not take place because um, chlorine is more reactive than bromine. Therefore, bromine cannot displace chlorine. And therefore, this reaction cannot actually take place. The reaction can not take place because Bromine can not displace chlorine. While the reaction of um, potassium iodide with chlorine 
potassium iodide plus chlorine. Actually, you are going to get potassium chloride plus iodine. And balancing this one, we're going to have here two, and there you're going to have two. Uh, it is possible because it is possible because actually chlorine can plus iodine because actually chlorine is more reactive than the iodine and therefore it can easily displace it and so uh, in fact today we can look at uh, these questions which you normally come in an exam and uh, so we will continue looking at the periodic table and look at uh, several other questions, which we can suspect that actually they can come in an exam or in an examination. And therefore, I thank you for actually listening.